Nicholas Cage. All right, so I'm not sure if you know about Nicholas Cringe or not, but he is a multi-millionaire actor from California. In his family, money is no object. When he was first discovered, he had a network of over a hundred million dollars, according to Forbes, after collecting at least two hundred million dollars from film royalties. In the recent years, Nick's lavish spending has gained notoriety. Between 1996 and 2011, Nick earned more than a hundred and fifty million in acting pay alone. As for Snake Eyes, he's earned sixteen million, twenty million for Gone in sixty seconds, which he blew all of his money in 60 seconds and another 20 million for National Treasure. I'm not sure if you've seen that movie but I feel like that's the only movie that this generation probably knows of. Now a survey of 2,000 people found that 13% of young people aged 18 to 25 don't know who Nicolas Cage is except for this one guy that went to South by Southwest. He literally went around posting photos with Nicolas Cage's face on it saying text me I'm your biggest fan and Nicolas Cage did text him you know. He has seen more of a philanthropist in several ways. Let me prove it to you. You know Johnny Depp this whole Depp information trial. So Johnny actually revealed that in the earlier days, Nicolas Cage encouraged him to pursue an acting career when he had no ambition for it. Nicholas literally was like, Johnny, you need to meet with my agent. And they met and the agent sent Johnny Depp out to his first audition, which was actually Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. And guess what? Johnny Depp booked that gig. He didn't even have to audition twice. He literally went in, did his thing, got hired. So you got to give the props to Nicolas Cage for that. After becoming one of the highest paid talents in the industry, Nicolas Cage found himself in big trouble with the IRS and owed the government 14 million in taxes. Now this revelation was followed by a lawsuit against his former business manager leading him to sign on to take more acting gigs just to make more money. Nicolas Cage continues to work a rapid pace and in 2022 he has at least four films coming out and there's one brand new one that just came out it's called The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. It does look kind of interesting and you know I might have to check it out myself. Nicolas Cage has been starring in films since the early 80s and at one point he even ranked amongst the highest paid actors as he was able to snagged 20 million dollars just for certain movies. Throughout his career he's reportedly earned at least over a hundred million dollars and spent almost all of it. Cage also endorsed a small amount of companies and brands, earning somewhere between one million and three million dollars. Once Cage's finances became an issue, he started to sell off some of his luxury prized possessions and many of his properties, which included over a dozen properties like mansions, townhomes, castles in all cities around the world, and just collected junk items he has. Now here's just a list of some of the purchases that the actor completed in in the past two decades. After an intruder broke into Cage's California home, he decided it was best to put it up for sale. He paid 25 million and sold it for 35 million. He also had a mansion that he sold for 10.5 million at an auction where he purchased it for 6.5 million. While that does mean he made an estimated 4 million profit, he was initially asking for 35 million dollars, which I think is ridiculous. Cage also bought a home in Malibu for about 3.3 million and then flipped it and sold it for 9.8 million dollars. Cage sold one of his European castles of of one of many that he has for $7 million after paying $10 million for it a few years prior. Cage also owned a number of properties in the UK, including a townhouse in Bath. Now he did purchase his townhouse in Bath for $7.6 million and made a loss by only selling it for $7 million. Cage also purchased the Grey Craig Mansion in 2007 for $15.7 million. Four years later, sold it for $6.2 million, meaning he did lose some more. And in 2010, Cage's Las Vegas home was sold for just under $5 million, well, he bought it for 8.5 million just a few years before that. Cage did profit really well off of this one thing, a comic book. He ended up buying one of the very first issues of Superman for $150,000 and was able to snag $2.2 million off of one of his highest bidders. At one point, Cage reportedly owned 50 cars, including a $450,000 Lamborghini that has been custom made for the Shah of Iran. In 1955, Jaguar D-Type, nine Rolls Royces, and one of the only Ferrari Enzo's ever made, which cost about a million dollars. Cage has had over four different yachts, including one that offered 12 bedrooms and which was about 20 million dollars. He also purchased a private jet that ran him as much as 30 million dollars. Now I don't know where he's getting all this free vending cash, but he clearly was not thinking about it. Cage also purchased a 3.4 million dollar mansion in New Orleans that was one of the most haunted houses in America. It's called La Lori Mansion. I'm not sure if you heard about it, but check it out when you have some time. He also bought a $3 million deserted island in the Bahamas and even bought shrunken mummy heads and spent another $150,000 on a pet octopus. Now rumor has it that Cage once outbid fellow actor Leonardo DiCaprio for a 70 million year old dinosaur skull. The $276,000 artifact turned out to be stolen. However, Cage had to return it to the Mongolian government. Now do you think the spending was worth it or would you do the same thing if you had extra cash laying around? Let me know in the comments below. My name is Aaron and thanks for checking out The Rich Life. Don't forget to like and 
subscribe to keep up with the richest in celebrity entertainment.